What's up, everybody? It's Brian Deitch, your favorite chief technology evangelist from Zscatter. I wanted to personally congratulate you on your announcement on a divestiture, carve out, or spinoff. But guess what? The real work starts now. Let me walk you through how Zscatter helps with IT separations for divestitures, carve outs, and spinoffs. First, we secure and restrict conveyed employees' access rights. What do I mean by this? In effect, we block these conveyed or separated users from having overarching access to the parent company or RemainCo's network. Second, we help manage TSAs. We do this by defining and informing in-scope applications for NUCO. In addition, we also help reduce NUCO's dependency on RemainCo for their services. Third, we help provide balance and visibility for RemainCo. Because conveyed users are not on the parent co network during the TSA period, IT and help desk staff can be more focused and balanced in where they provide their support. And lastly, we help accelerate the stand-up of NUCO's corporate infrastructure and we enable them to adopt a cloud-first strategy. Now let's jump into the Lightboard and I'll show you how we get this done. All right, team, before we jump into it, let's do a quick overview of what I've already have illustrated right here. So we have RemainCo, this is the company doing the divestiture. We have NUCO, that's the new company. And in both cases, these users are working from anywhere. That includes working from home, Starbucks, or even at the office. We shift over here a little bit. This is RemainCo's data center. This is where the applications all live. The green applications, A, B, and C, these should only be accessed by RemainCo employees, whereas applications X, Y, and Z should only be accessed by NUCO. And at the end of the day, NUCO wants to eventually be able to take these applications and to move them into their own data center. So let's jump into what this actually looks like. So it's day zero, you're doing the divestiture, you're hyped up, you know it's busy, you have a workload on your plate, you're trying to figure out how do you manage these TSAs, you're trying to figure out how do I inventory these applications, and most importantly, how do you protect your IP? So why Zscar? What can I actually do for you? Let's just draw the zero trust exchange right here so we can connect the dots. Always you know the Zscatter trust exchange, the zero trust ex exchange, the ZTE for short. But the idea here is how does our zero trust framework actually help you? And what it does is it helps enable you to rapidly and securely move these conveyed users to the applications, cut them off from the stuff that they shouldn't be talking about, put them out here on their own little island. What does that actually look like? As we've discussed in um, previous videos, we have Zscatter Client Connector. It's a lightweight agent. This gets distributed out to all of your endpoints. And it reaches out over here. On NUCO, they're going to have the Zscatter Client Connector on this as well. It reaches outbound. Over here at the data center, we have the Zscatter Application Connector. And the sole goal in life of this thing is to reach outbound to the Zero Trust Exchange. Then on top of that, it has like that application adjacency. It can talk to applications X, Y, and Z. And it can also talk to applications A, B, and C. Now first and foremost, we want to be able to identify the users that are coming through. Look at that. We always want to federate identity. So let's say that RemainCo is on Azure Active Directory. Not a problem, we do that. SAML-based authentication, that allows us to get very contextualized in our rules. We know who exactly the user is, their group memberships, departments, and locations. And then as we move over here, we can say maybe there's a moment in time where we still leverage Azure Active Directory for NUCO, but in the event that NUCO says, you know what, we don't wanna do that. We wanna use our own identity provider. That's not a big deal to us at all. So. Nuco comes over here and they say, we want to rock with Okta, not a problem. I can support multiple identity providers and it helps with this transition much quicker. Now the neat part about this is all traffic flows to the Zero Trust Exchange. We look at the identity of the user and we produce a verdict. Can the user go there? And the verdict is always the same. It's allow, deny, it's isolate or it's deceive. But in the interest of connectivity, we're going to say that we want to, the, the flows here will be in allow. So as this user comes up and says, hey, I want to talk to application B, that traffic goes from here 
the Zero Trust Exchange. This outbound connection comes right back over here, and that user can talk to that application. Now, if this Remain Co company says, I want to talk to application Y, well, guess what? It comes up over here, hits this, and based off the policy that you set, that's new co and new co only. You don't have the right permissions to do it. It's blocked. The really neat part about this is it's not blocked here. It's not blocked here. It's blocked in the Zero Trust Exchange. And for the new co employees, as they're coming through any application, applications X, Y, and Z, it hits the Zero Trust Exchange and you have the ability to broker the connectivity to it. Now, what's really neat about this is when you're considering your, your TSAs and whatnot, we're doing catalog discovery of applications. So if you perceive like only the only applications they ever talked to are applications X, Y, and Z, and all of a sudden this new co person is asking for an application you didn't even know existed, right? It's application four, not a problem. We can broker the connectivity and then you can use that to inform the TSA. The conveyed users, they're off the network, as with anybody over here. And by association, if this user is not on the network, they can't do things like introduce risk. And last but not least, <clears throat> Nuco wants to get these applications moved into their own data center. Remainco wants them out, right? And quite simply, then take those applications, application X, Y, Z, and oh, application four as well. It's now going to move you over here. And from a connectivity standpoint, it's like, well, what do we do? How do we broker that? You already know it. It's that Zscaler application connector. It's deployed out here. It reaches outbound to the Zero Trust Exchange, has that application adjacency. And the only users that can talk to these applications once they've been moved, this new co. And it becomes a very beautiful thing. Remain co comes back over here and they're like, wow, this is great. We can now decommission these services that we had here at one point in time. We have the ability to know that these applications have been moved over here. Nuco is happy. You protected your IP. Now that you've seen how the Zscore platform works, let's go back to our original slide. First, we talked about securing the access of conveyed employees. As I demonstrated, those users are off parent co's network. They are on their own little island with their own IDP and their permissions to key applications are controlled via policy. Second, regarding TSAs, you can see how Zscaler sits in line with traffic. Therefore, we can help catalog and inventory the applications that the users are accessing. This can rapidly simplify your TSA negotiations and it eliminates potential blind spots after day one. Third, as an IT support person on the Remain Co side, I now have visibility into what applications, SaaS or non-SaaS, that Nuco is accessing. Additionally, I'm only supporting a limited number of applications per the TSA. This is significantly different than the traditional model where these conveyed users are still on my network for 12, even up to 18 months. Thus, my job is more focused and balanced. Lastly, from Nuco's perspective, they can retain Zscaler's platform that's been in, put in place during the TSA period and use it to accelerate their cloud first strategy. They can leverage the Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange to facilitate user to application connectivity, but they don't have to worry about buying new MPLS or a secure web gateway or a new firewall or any of those individual point products, thereby simplifying overall infrastructure. I hope you guys have found some value in this session. My name is Brian Deach. I'm your Chief Technology Evangelist. And thank you for spending some time with me.